when people say, you know, they say after seeing a Broadway show, how can these people be doing this 700 times? Lirvan Yacobi, thank you so much for being with me on 20 Minute Leaders. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. I'm really When honored. did we do Mamma Mia together? That was seven nine years, years ago. ago. How much? Nine, nine, nine years ago. We, that was nine years ago. Okay, so Mamma Mia, then we did Legally Blonde. We did You Can't Take It With You. You've done a dozen other productions, but those, those were the ones that we did together. And yeah. uh, I had the time of my life uh, under mm -hmm. your command as the director. Um, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm so happy to have you here because I'd love to spend the next 19 minutes or so talking about theater, talking about education. And what, how does this all fit in? And what is it, what is it like being a drama teacher um, and uh, educating, you know, all ages, K to 12? So talk to me a little bit about what, what do you do? Okay, so uh, I, I'll start... From the beginning, I mean, yes. I'm, I'm going to start next year. Will be my tenth year at uh, wow. the American School in Israel. I'll be celebrating a decade, which feels like uh, it flew by, you know. Um, and it started with me teaching the middle school and the high school, uh, teaching them drama and directing a play per school uh, a year. So I had one play in the middle school, right. one in the high school. Mamma mia. And Legally Blonde, right. yeah. And that was my first. That was my first play. That was my first musical, and it's just. Uh, I look back, and it's just fantastic. As in Iran, we were rock stars. We, I know. we were a hit. We were a hit, and it was amazing. And I think that it's uh, set a tone for what theater is expected and it should be like at our school ever since. And I, I mean. I do my best to bring it out there every every single year, and usually we do. But it's just like it's just it's, it was such an amazing experience. You so know? right next to your head over here, I'm gonna put now a small thing from Mamma Mia, and of course, it's, I'm gonna put Pepper and uh, Tanya dancing. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <but yeah. laughs> um, and then uh, as the years uh, passed, I started teaching in the kindergarten, and then I added preschool, and then I. I started working with the elementary school as well, and it ends up that I'm teaching from preschool three-year-olds up to 18-year-olds. Uh, what and is teaching drama? How do you teach drama? What does that mean? Okay, so I think that, you know, if you don't... I, okay, I'll start from, like, I, I studied acting, okay? So I went to acting school, and I uh, learned to be a professional actor, and... Um, but it's not drama is not acting so what you do when you become a drama teacher is try to teach drama as a language okay it's a means of communication and that's my motto and that's the first thing any class will hear from me the very very start of a, a course and say to them you know we're not going to become the next Meryl Streep in our class we're going to be uh, learning a language in which we can express ourselves in a different way a way to communicate with one another, a platform in which we can express our feelings, emotions, in a way that is um, artistic and creative. And I think that that is, you know, these are the main focuses that I think about when I'm teaching drama, that it's a means of communication and it's creative. It's a creative outlet in an era of technology, in an era of uh, uh, screens. Talk and to me about this because you know when I went to AAS, I had half of my classes. I had my laptop open. In some classes, I was a rebel if I had my laptop open because 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 you know the, the, some teachers still wanted us to have notebook. I don't think teachers anymore are have that have that dilemma. I think that it's pretty much a, a lost battle by now. But I think that I was very fortunate to be in a transition age where. I experienced both the physical learning, in-group experiences, communication in the class, and not just one-on-one -on -one with computers. Now I believe every first grader almost uh, has a computer that they're working with. And then they come to Liran's drama class, mm -hmm. and the computers are aside. Why, why is this important to have this outlet 
of human to human communication for you? So I think that one of the most important, so first of all, they're not allowed to bring a computer to my class. It's the first thing that I tell them, like you are not, I don't want you to use a computer. For what would they use it for? <laughs> Uh, they would use, well, first of all, you know, there are drama teachers that will um, ask that uh, ask kids to journal, to write a journal about oh, the work okay. or write a blog. So, like character uh, development and stuff like that. Right. It's really important for the thought process to write things down because you will forget if you don't. But then sure. I, if I do ask them to do that, I will ha ask them to write in a notebook. Uh, but I do ask them to use a computer if they're looking for music or searching for like a certain scene that we're, you know, getting some inspiration. Right, but right. As, as a preset, we don't come in with a computer to class. And I think that one of, and again, in this decade that I've been working, you're right. I think that you were a transition age in which you guys had the privilege of doing, um, you know, old school learning with a, right. a pen and a uh, paper. Uh, but I think today, 90% uh, of, of, uh, classes will be with the use of a laptop sure um which creates a kind of disconnect you know there's a little bit of an alien like again if you are a people person then it doesn't matter if you'll have a hundred screens around you sure you are able to communicate right do you but see a difference in generations as the years go by yes yes a lot i feel really? like yeah, I feel like, um, first of all, it makes me feel older because it makes me feel so old because I feel like, you know, I see these generations passing by and kids changing and you're not comprehending like how kids are evolving and you're staying in this, at the end of the day, I'm a 90s high schooler, you know, like I was in high school in the 90s. We didn't have computers. We didn't have all these things. Right. So looking back, it looks so completely different. But I think that, um, so... So this creative outlet, I think kids are very creative. I don't yeah. think like, I don't think you can take creativity out of a child that's in their DNA, but um, they take it out on the with themselves on their screen. Right. And to shut down a screen and force a kid to look into each other's eyes is one of the most awkward things. For yeah. Them to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So awkward. And I mean, I don't know if you it's remember. So awkward for me today. So obviously, it is. as a kid. But it is not, obviously, it, it's already awkward because you're a teenager. I don't know if you remember uh, we when uh, Paulina sang The Winner Takes It All, and she had to sing Looking Into Maor's Eyes, um, and Amit, Amit, not Amar. Amit, Amit Maor's Amar the brother, yeah. And uh, she, it was the hardest rehearsal ever. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a four minute song and there's no one on stage and there's a spotlight on you and all you're doing is looking at that person. And so it was very, very, it's awkward, but it's important to learn the skill. I learned so much about, about humans and interaction and relationships uh, between people through, through our, through our uh, plays. And I have to transition to that because that, that is the most fascinating thing that I, that I can ask you about. The community and the family that you're building through these productions. So you're doing a high school production, a middle school production, taking a group of, you know, 10 to 20 students who have a lot of other stuff going on. They're not professional actors or actresses or dancers or singers. They are happy-go-lucky kids. And um, some of them more nerdy, some of them more athletic. And you're putting them and you're saying, within a few months, we're going to be putting up these, this amazing production. Talk, walk me through this process. What, what happens from the audition to the end result? Well, I think that, you know, one of the, one of the, like, the magic of theater, if we take out, like, the classes where we learn the communication and speak drama, the productions is, you know, try, I always tell the kids, try to visualize the fact that you're taking black little letters on a white piece of paper and you're giving it life, okay? At the end, after two months, it won't be a piece of paper with writing on it. It will have, you have you have built life and sure. I, that's and and for me that's theater you know the expression of life you bring you express relationships like you said you express uh what uh, emotions are you express what people are thinking you bring a, a, you you embody a human being and and i think that's the process that they go through i am not a director that i don't i don't really care so much 
about the position in which someone is standing on stage, what angle they're standing at. Right. But what is it? What do you mean to say? What do you want from your partner? You know, when you're saying to someone, I love you, what are you actually saying to them? You know, what's your subtext? Are you saying, I need you, don't let me go, I am vulnerable without you? Are you saying, um, I, I hate you, but I need you to be here to hear me? Or, you know, what is it, what is it that you want from your partner? Okay, so, and thinking about like how acting is reacting to one another. So if I right. say, how are you, Michael? I don't randomly throw it out there. There's an expectation to hear an answer. So if I poke you in the eye, I expect you to shut your eye, right? Because that yeah. acting is reacting and that's what acting is. So, and you layer it up, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process. And I think that once, once the kids understand that that's what they're doing, that's when the magic comes. Because you can dress your character up and you can say, okay, my character is a unicorn and I'm going to put a little horn over here. And, you know, yay, I'm... But it doesn't mean anything if, if it doesn't have the, in, the inside is not filled up with wants and needs and conflict and um, obstacles and dreams, you know, and you're trying to imagine a life for that person. The, the, the key word that I'm hearing here is awareness, because I remember for me spending those rehearsals and being on stage, you have to be so aware of yourself, your surrounding, the different things that are happening, the different changes that could take place during a show and having to adapt to them. So, so you know, one of the things that I thought about this going, going into, you know, acting or being on the stage is, yeah, okay, so you memorize, you rehearse a hundred different times. L uh, Liran Yacobi might scream at you 99 of those times until you get it right that hundredth time, uh, not what to do, but how to express yourself. Yeah. And then you just do it and it's automatic. But what the, then what we noticed in the five runs of Mamma Mia or Legally Blonde or You Can't Take It With You, every time it's different. The audience is different. The, the people are bringing in their own life onto the stage. And I think one of the beautiful things of having experienced a non-professional uh, production was that we, it was very hard, at least for me and from some of my friends, to distinguish our personal life from the character and the show that we're doing. And I remember, especially, you know, during Legally Blonde, there was a lot of like drama, like high school drama going around. And, and you saw how every show had a different feeling, had a different uh, communication style on and off the stage. And it made me much more aware of people and emotions. And I, and hope, and I think it also taught me more empathy. So, uh, so I think that I got so much more than just, you know, taking black words and putting them on, on the stage. It, it meant a lot, a lot to me. So first of all, I'm really, really, it makes me very emotional and excited to hear that even nine, se eight, seven years after Amazing. you've done this production, that you still carry this experience with you. And yes, absolutely agree with you that giving life to a character is complete, like a, a, a complete exercise in empathy. Yep. And, um, and yes, theater is live. It's alive. And it, you know, and this is what people say, you know, they say after seeing a Broadway show, how can these people be doing this 700 times? Um, it's, it changes, even if it's minuscule and you as an audience member will not see the difference. It's, it's, it's the way you come, you know, you might have won the lottery that morning or your pet might have died right. and you're still bringing in this character, but, and there's a different, you may sing a happy song, but there's a different depth to it, you know, and, uh, yeah. and, and it's live and it's on you and you're reacting to an audience. I mean, I don't even, you know, there are, um, there are performances in which the audience and especially in a school when you have, it's an international school and you might have uh, the parents come and they're 90% of them don't speak English as a first language and they're not laughing at the jokes that you thought are, oh my God, they're so obvious out yeah. there. And you're, and it, but so you're dealing with, as an, as, a, as an actor, you're having not only a relationship with your co, co actor, but also a relationship with the audience member sure. and, or how it, how, uh, like a burst of laughter will definitely immediately ignite this energy boost of energy for the rest oh. of the performance. And, um, but, and I think also like that is like, the, that's the magic of performance, you know, and for me being able to teach kids uh, and having them experience that is what 
is worth everything, 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 you know? Like so that was I, my next question because you can, you know, with your experience, uh, there's so many opportunities of, of places where you could be and things you could do in the drama and theater world. You chose to be an educator and spend much of your time working with kids who've never sung, danced, spoken on stage, help overcome uh, speaking, public speaking fears, helping overcome, you know, social anxiety and, and teaching them empathy um, in scenarios that, in circumstances that they might not have otherwise. It sounds, it sounds great, but it's very hard work. Why, why did you choose to do that hard work instead of going and having fun at Habima and Savta or any other theater? Well, first of all, to be fair, uh, a professional, the professional acting world isn't, um, isn't easy. Uh, like anything that is professional, you know, like uh, I, I assume that starting startups looks like fun, but it's also a lot of work. 99% uh, fail, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you hear many no's next to these wonderful yeses that you might hear sure. in the news. But I think that for me, the transition from uh, the professional life of an actor, director to teaching was this, you know, I was thinking when we talked about, you know, having this interview or this conversation, I was thinking, my gosh, you know, like, um, what, like, I, it helped me retrospect on myself a little bit. And I remember acting school and acting school for me was a greenhouse of creativity was I could fail miserably. You know, you don't even understand how many times I threw myself out there and did the most ridiculous things because I could you know, because I had the ability to try and fail and I could wake up the next morning and try again. Okay. Love it. And that was magical for me. But and when I went out from acting school into the professional acting world, I didn't have that anymore. I didn't have that because you go to a, a casting director and they're looking at you and, you know, what do you sell? You know, who, what, what kind of, what, what, what character are you? They don't want to deal with you know, your creative outlets, and they don't have time. It's a business, you know? Um, but, and then... I love that sentence. They don't, they, don't, they don't want to deal with your creative outlets. <laughs> it's kind of true. Um, again, unless yeah, you no, are I, Meryl Streep, and she's a one in a generation, you know? Like, she can do anything. She can. Yeah. Or uh, Judy Dench. Or, you know, like, there are a number of privileged, you know, God-gifted human beings <laughs> I can be doing that, but most of us, no, you know, like you can, I'm not going to name uh, famous actors, but you know, you can imagine in your mind that you see it, one movie, you see 10 movies with the same actor, at the end of the day, they're the same people, you know? Totally. Uh, but then, and then I started teaching, you know, like doing activities and, and I found that creative outlet again, you know, for me, like that's such a key word, you know, I found the joy of letting my students, you know, let them fail and say to them, it's okay to yeah. try and fail f fabulously, you know? Yeah, there's, no the other, there's no other places where you can do that. I mean, even in That's sports, nice. in practices, you're practicing with the team. And, you know, even if your coach says, yeah, try something, fail miserably, it's not the same. It's so competitive and you're always judged. On stage, you're not being judged. Well, you know, it's, again, like it's, it really, I think, depends on the experience that you have. But I mean, oh, I do yeah. try. To, I, it's, I think one of my, my jobs as a teacher and as an ed educator yeah. is, is to create a, um, a safe zone when sure. you come into the theater. And it, yes, no one will judge you because like you, your friend Danny and Johnny will fail. Maybe not today, but tomorrow. And it's sure. okay because... You will, you, you will all excel at some point and you will all fail at some point. And it's wonderful because you tried things out that you didn't know you had in you. Maybe an accent, maybe a certain walk, maybe a, you know, a mimic in the face. And, and, um, and at the end of it, you found how much gratifying, you know, gratifying it was for them to be able to find that little something in them Amazing. that they didn't know that they had there. So what better job in, in life is to work with children and being able to see them find themselves, you know? Iran, and it's incredible. I had a, a horrible fear of dancing my whole life. And I'll never forget the day you come and say, well, Michael, you know, the role of Pepper comes with a minute solo dancing on stage. I'm like, what, what do you mean? What, what's what's dancing? <laughs> 
And uh, it took time and it took tries and I made a fool of myself quite a few times, uh, probably up until the, the, also in the show itself. But looking back uh, every now and then I, I find that clip on YouTube and it's like, like, wow. Like I, w- I remember how scared I was of dancing and here I'm on stage, still horribly dancing, almost falling off the stage, but I'm having so much fun with so much confidence. And uh, it's all thanks to you. I mean, you gave me that confidence. You know, I think it's, first of all, thank you so much. But I do have to say to you that I remember you, um, you know, I I, I can't be in the head of a teenager because I was, you know, like it's been a while. But you might have, like in your head, you might have felt this like, oh my God, what does she want from me? But you never, you never showed that, you know, you, and again, like that's another lesson in, in theater and improv but classic improvisation is yes and yes and yes and yes and 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 you did and i was able to 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 give you a i could have canceled the solo we had live music we could have canceled the solo but you said yes and i'll i'll jump from the bar yes and and so you gave me that was so dangerous liran i could have broken an ankle looking back i know i I was young and foolish back then (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I, I believed in you guys, and I think that I think that I think that you felt comfortable Very. saying yes because you felt that I believed in you, and then I think that this it, it's a, it has to go both ways. You know, you've got to trust your director. It's true. I get exasperated, and I may scream, and I may yell, and you know, like blow my my brain. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a very emotional director. Um, because I'm a perfectionist and I expect, you know, the best for myself. So I expect the best for my kids. Definitely. But, um, but I think I do try to create a trust, a trusting relationship in which the actor can knows that he's in safe hands, you know? I love and it. Not, and I said, I always say to the kids, I will, you know, I will not sleep for two months Yes. To make sure that when you guys go on stage, you are proud of what you do. You will not go it. on stage feeling ashamed. I love we're it. not doing a play just to do a play because it says in the calendar, play in March. We're doing a play because we are going to be remembering this day forever and thinking on you know our past the days, what a wonderful experience this was, you know? I love it. Liran, this is, this, is so, this is so fantastic. And it's impossible to capture in 20 minutes. The, the no. inspiration that you gave me and so many others <laughs> over so many years. And I can't believe you're finishing your 10th year. And no, I started my 10th year. I finished my 9th. Oh, it's just as crazy. I can't, because I, I remember when you came and I remember when every, like, it was all like a big startup in school. Like nobody real, nobody knew what, what's happening. No, none of us knew what's happening. Uh, incredible. Liran, before we leave, uh, the hardest question, three words that you would use to describe yourself or the, or that, any actor that you've worked with would describe you as? I think that the first um, word to mind would be creative. Mm-hmm, um, definitely. The other thing would be uh, insightful. I have the ability to be insightful. And I think, I don't know if I'm a, a co-actor, but a, a student uh, would think I am young or youthful you know like I, uh, that would be also something that uh i i can be relatable so maybe Definitely. not useful but relatable so 100%. I would guess these are the three things but i mean there's more and i don't uh-huh. have not everything is good 100 <laughs> percent. no Liran, i know I'll, I'll add a fourth word i'll say educator mainly because oh, we didn't i didn't take a single class with you and uh, there is no record of ais or my uh, academic record that will show any connection between the two of us yet Looking back at my uh, 12 years of education, if I had to choose a, a few things that really shaped who I am as a thinker and as a, as a human being, I definitely think that our work together was a, a major, major part of it, if not the biggest part of it. And here I am, you know, I'm an engineer, I'm in AI, but, but I'm looking back at this experience as one of the most monumental in my life. And, oh, and so wow. I to thank you. And so, so just know of the impact that you do. And, and I'm taking this also mm-hmm. as an impact that drama teachers and, and theater and the directors and choreographers have all over the world on students and 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 while things are moving online i hope that we are able to retain this thing uh, but yeah thank you so yeah, much thank, thank you for being on the show thank you so much michael i'm so proud of the man that you've become thank you thank you thank you